I just want to say this briefly because you may not hear me say that again, but I just want to say that God has blessed you with a unique leader couple in the person of the Brackens. Do not, do not take them for granted. Don't miss that part of my sermon. Don't take them for granted. Praise God for the gift every day. Because I can tell you that there are churches across the nation of America and certainly other countries of the world that will give an arm and a leg to have them to be their pastors. Thank God for the gift that he has given you. Amen. I'll probably say more about that later on. I'm happy that my wife is here. Most of you ladies already know who she is. But the rest of you, I want you to know this lady sitting on the front. That's my wife. It's not my daughter. (laughs) She is a little ball of dynamite. I mean, she's like a little pressurized ball. You can't get her under. You push it down, she'll jump up and there'll be a bigger splash. I thank God for her life and for her dedication. But ladies and gentlemen, this series of meetings starting this morning, I declare unto you is not just another series of meetings. I don't do a whole lot of series of meetings anymore. Not because I don't want to, but because my time is so consumed in many other things, all to the glory of God. But I sensed a firm confirmation from the Holy Spirit when Pastor asked me to stay for a few days. Therefore, I believe that this Series, let me just call it a revive series, just to have some reference. This revive series starting today is going to catapult several people in these days to the level where you've only thought perhaps God will be able to take you. But God is going to suddenly catapult you in this series to a level you have never thought possible. There is going to be an impartation of the supernatural power of God into people's lives. There there is going to be, there's going to be a moment. I, I don't know when it's going to be because I do think that it's going to be at different times for different people. And then there's going to be a collective moment where God is going to show up in splendor. And at that moment, people are going to be delivered and set free and healed and released into the greater purposes of God. I, I want to encourage you, don't miss any one of these services. Not, not, not because I, I'm, I'm looking for a crowd, because honestly, crowds do not impress me. What I'm looking for are hungry people. And if you are hungry for more of God, I, I invite you to come. If you're not hungry for God, just go and have some salmon, that's fine. But if you are hungry for God, if you've got to sacrifice, sacrifice. You've got to change your agenda, change your agenda. But if you are hungry for God, don't miss one moment. Father, in these next few moments, I pray for a mighty deluge of power from on high. I pray for the release of spiritual authority. The anointing that destroys yokes of bondage. And above all, I pray that Jesus will be glorified. 
Let your word come alive. Let your spirit begin to thrive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Honey, while I'm talking, will you get your laptop and just turn in your Bible? Yes. iPad can also be a Bible. Find me uh, Isaiah 64, if you don't mind, in the New Living Translation. I just feel I want to read out of that. You have it? <laughs> See what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Isaiah chapter 64 is what I'm going to simply use as the introduction for where we're going in these next few days. I will be using that as base this morning and then I will be referencing it several times during this week. Uh, I, I believe that perhaps even this evening I will zero in it almost line by line. But I want to talk to you this morning about a world or a church in crisis needs a Holy Ghost awakening. Isaiah chapter 64, beginning in verse number one, it says, Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. As fire causes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. Then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. Talking to God. When you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began, no ear has heard and no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for him. Who works for those who wait for him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways, but you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves we wither and fall and our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, you have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Don't be so angry with us, Lord. Please don't remember our sins forever. Look at us, we pray. And see that we are all your people. And when I read these verses, it was almost as though I could think that Isaiah could have been alive today. It is such a cry of the heart. Because ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to be a prolific prophet to know and to realize that like cascading waters from a summit, our world 
is now engulfed in crisis. Our nation, the United States of America, is engulfed in a crisis. It's amazing that every time you turn on the news, there's a, there's a new crisis breaking out. There are more people slaughtered. There are more people killed. And many times when we think it can't get worse, it does. It is shocking. You don't know where to pay attention anymore. And I believe that it's because of all these things that our attention has become divided. We cannot focus on one thing and get one thing satisfied. We cannot focus on one thing and see it solved or resolved. We cannot see it because there are too many things going on. And I declare unto you, it's the enemy that is is trying to destroy our focus. He is trying to get our attention away from what is most important. And I dare say unto you, from that very ruins, from this engulfed crisis that we are in, God is going to ignite a Holy Ghost fire that's going to make a difference in the entire world that we're living in. We realize that we have an energy crisis. We, we, we have an economic crisis. And I don't want to be a prophet of doom, but ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we're headed for the greatest economic crisis you can ever think of. There was a time, it's been quite a while ago, that I had a, a 401k, but then it became a 201k. Then it dwindled to a 101K, and today I wonder what happened to K. We, we, we have a food crisis, worse than you may imagine. There, there is a security crisis. There's a confidence crisis. We have an identity crisis. And we have a religious crisis. We have a family crisis. We have a moral crisis. We have a marriage standard crisis. We have all kinds of crisis that we are facing. And the world in crisis needs a Holy Ghost awakening. It's not going to be solved by any governmental organization. It's not going to be solved in the courthouse or the White House. It will be solved in God's house. It's going to be a, a release of the majestic power of the Holy Spirit. It's going to take more than what you and I could ever imagine. But we are like Isaiah crying out to God, Oh God, come down. Because we remember all the great things that you have done in the past. And we can look back and we can recount and we can remember all the good things that God has done. And here today I declare to you what God is about ready to do is so huge that what happened in the past will pale in comparison. I think what is concerning is that Many churches today have stopped making an effort to have true revival. They have steered away from following hard after God. They jump through the religious hoops soothe the conscience, pat people on the back, kiss the babies on their cheeks, 
say the right things and do the right things. But the real question is, was God even there? But ladies and gentlemen, God cannot bless nothing. God can only bless an effort. And when no effort is made, God has nothing to bless. And that's why these days are, are becoming an effort. It's becoming a time when we're going to have to change our schedules. We're going to have to make an effort to show up. It's not going to happen by itself. But I want to guarantee you today on the promises of God that if we are going to make an effort these next few days, God is going to bless our effort and the power of God is going to change our world and change our lives. The only worse thing than a quitter is a person that's afraid to begin. We are going to begin. And simply stated, revival is expressed in the phrase in Acts chapter 3 verse 19 where it says, Times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. And I want to say this to you that, that I, I, I believe this, that anyone who has ever lived in the realm of real revival can never be satisfied to live in any, any lesser realm. Once you have tasted the goodness of God, once you have experienced the true presence of God, you will never be satisfied with anything else. It's not religion that's going to help us. It's not organization that's going to help us. It's not a new constitution that will help us. It's not new rules and regulations that will help us. It will only be the manifest presence of God that will show up in the midst of the people again. Pentecostal revival was born in the fire of the Holy Ghost by hungry hearts and cannot be satisfied with just the smoldering embers and smoke of past experience. I love to say it this way, I was born in the fire and I cannot live in the smoke. I cannot be satisfied with the smoke. I've got to have the fire. Because the smoke is a clear indication that there is fire somewhere. And we have become satisfied with the fumes of the fire. We've become satisfied with the smoke. But I don't want the smoke. I don't want the fumes. I am looking for the fire. I'm looking for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Revival is not a peculiar activity for unusual people at special times, but rather is or at least should be a normal and constant experience for all Christians at all times. Mistakenly, however, some people feel that revival comes as an occasional notion or spasmodic whim on the part of God. And the idea that it is things of special times and seasons owes its inception to our own inconsistency and not the will of God. In this respect, we have made revival an event. Revival is not an event. 
revival is an experience an experience with the Holy Spirit the third person in the Trinity revival means that what was once dead has come alive and today we're going to say devil watch out the church is coming alive we are rising up to the occasion we're not going to back off we're not going to back down we're going to rise up and declare there is no other God than our God and in our inconsistencies we have abbreviated everything that used to make to take weeks to accomplish we have taken on a microwave mindset. We think we can say a few good things, add a few principles, put it in a bowl, and stick it in the microwave oven, and beep, a revival is going to burst for it. It does not work that way, ladies and gentlemen. We cannot rush revival. That's why I read it twice and I read it slowly. That the presence of God comes down when we wait for the Lord. The average churchgoer today is not ready for evangelism. Not ready for revival. Not ready for discipleship witnessing or spiritual involvement or any other enterprise until there is a radical and personal inner renewal. True revival does not start in a church. True revival starts in the heart of individuals and it's when individuals break through that God releases the anointing to flow over the whole but somebody is going to have to touch God Somebody. Somebody is going to have to touch God. And you will miss it if you think it should be that should be touching God the responsibility is yours oh yeah pastor will touch God let's not be concerned about that but until somebody touches God not going to happen and I, I want you to listen to me I, I, I realize I've got to land this plane and I've got to land it quickly but I want you to listen to me real quickly listen I'm talking about revival but I'm not talking about a kind of a old time brush arbor kind of thing I'm talking about a refreshing that comes from the heart of God I don't want you to miss this because I want to ask you, if I have to, I will plead with you. I'll beg you, please, in all of what we're saying, please don't seek revival. Because if it's revival, we are seeking, we may end up with the wrong result. Hold on, don't, don't lose me. 
if it's revival that we're looking for in itself, we may not have what we are really after. Because if it's revival that we're after, we may even be guilty of trying to import revival and duplicate here what God is doing in other places. We, 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 we may want to go after revival and say, wow, well, God has, has broken out in this place. So we are going to copy. We're going to duplicate everything they're doing so that we can also have revival over here. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. One of the things that was most hurtful of the Brownsville revival was that so many pastors and churches tried to copy and duplicate what happened there. God does not copy patterns. God has an original for every church. And if revival is what I'm seeking, I may try to sing their songs, I may wave their same banners, decorate my church the same way, and speak the same way, hoping that revival will come, and it may never come, or when it comes, it may not be what we're looking for. Therefore, I say to you, it's not revival that you must be seeking, it is the reviver that you've got to seek. And once we have found the reviver, revival will be the result. Likewise, I want to say, don't seek healing, look for the healer. Don't look for restoration, look for the restorer. Don't look for the baptism, find the baptizer. It's once we have found him that all of the rest will come into place. Therefore, we've got to seek after God like we have never sought after him. And I believe that's the reason why Pastor felt that we've got to set a few days apart so that we can go after the reviver, that we can go over him that holds all power in his hand. I feel I'm just through with the introduction, but that's good. I've still got a few days ahead. There's going to be so much power in this place. I, uh, I'm so excited. I, I, I can't wait. I wish I wished it was t this evening already or, or tomorrow. I, uh, yeah, yeah, but, but we'll get there. But there's something I've got to tell you. Whew. When you sang that song, Let the ro lion roar in Alaska. Something erupted in my spirit. And I, I'm just going to tell you how I felt at that moment. And what I saw in my mind, in my carnal mind, it sounds totally impossible. I can't see with my human mind how that will work. But I have found my human mind doesn't count in this case, in any case. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you what I felt. And I, I feel such an unction on me. I, I may not even be able to say what I'm saying to you now in the second service. Because, because I, I may not feel the same unction in, in the second service that I, that I feel here right now. But in that moment, I felt that something radically is going to happen spiritually in Alaska. And the great move of God is going to start in Alaska. And from Alaska, the lion is going to roar and it's going to move to the lower 48. The lion is going to start roaring somehow in Alaska. And somehow from what's going to happen in Alaska, it's going to impart the rest of the United States of America. All 50 states are going to be impacted by something that's going to happen in Alaska. 
and the lion is going to roar in Alaska and the world is going to take note because it's going to be the lion out of the tribe of Judah that's going to roar and the church is going to come alive. Jump to your feet, throw your hands in the air and begin to give the Lord a shout of praise. Come on, let's give the Lord a shout of praise. Let's mean it. Let's get serious. And with your hands raised high, I want you to shout out loud a few times. Lord, let it begin in me. Go ahead. Lord, let it begin in me. Let it begin in me, Lord. Let it start right here in this very moment. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I release the powerful anointing of the Holy Spirit over this entire gathering. Lord, I, I, I sense that even in the second service, some great things are going to begin to happen. But right now I pray, Lord, for this great gathering in front of me, for the mighty release of the mighty anointing of the Holy Spirit. And that there will be a fire that's going to be set alight. Alight by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's going to be a spark, oh God, that's going to be ignited. Lord, I'm not going to be surprised this week when cancers fall out and tumors dry up and blind eyes are going to open and deaf ears are going to hear. I'm, I'm not going to be surprised if crutches are going to fly through the air. I'm not going to be surprised by hardened people getting saved this week. And unsaved families come back to Christ. We expected God. We make a decree and it shall be established. That this week is history in the making. Come on everybody. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift your voices. Begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Release your power. Release your power. Just be seated for one moment. Pastor is going to come back. As he comes back, I just want to briefly tell you that we're not going across the United States of America only in a different church every Sunday, but we have powerful leadership networks in South Africa. We've, we've already arranged four huge conferences in October. I've rented four huge venues and we're expecting thousands of pastors and leaders to show up. Many of them will walk there. I'm trying to get buses to, to bring in many others. We're going to feed them at every occasion. We're going to give them material because we don't know how much time we have left. And uh, when you give this morning in the offering, pray, us, pray about supporting one pastoral leader. It will cost us about $25. If you can get to $25, God knows where you are. But help us. Islam is sweeping that nation. We've got to get the gospel out. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Ushers, would you help us, please? Hallelujah. If you're making out a check, make it out to KC. Once again, you can use the, the app called PushPay. And uh, you can scroll down on that and find guest speaker. 
attach that if you would. The Bossmans are um, a part of our prophetic conference in Maui. That's where we first met. And, um, you know, because of the limitations of getting all the different people into the service this morning, that's why we're limited on time. Don't, don't miss tonight. Don't miss Monday night, Tuesday night. I'm going to prophesy, flow in the Holy Ghost. It's just tremendously accurate prophets, both him and his wife. Amen. So you don't want to miss that. Ushers, would you come if you're ready? Say aye. The Lord says to you today that what's impossible with man is possible with God. And even though in the midst of tremendous loss and even times of confusion, God's been touching your heart and touching your mind as you've sat here today. It's almost like hope's begun to rise. The Lord says, I'm pouring over you. I'm pouring over your family. I'm pouring over you. I'm washing away that which needs to be washed away. And you're finding even courage and strength coming to you. You're a strong man physically. God is going to make you a strong man in the spirit. And that the enemy tried to use for evil, tried to kill you, tried to take you out. You will one day be a man that actually teaches others how to overcome. You'll teach others how to, how to conquer. You'll teach others how to walk. And, and I'm healing your heart. I'm going to restore. Joel 2.25 says, I'll restore all the years the locusts have taken should be death, dead by all rights, but God has spared you and it's for his purposes. Be encouraged, be strengthened. Be encouraged, be strengthened with might today. Be healed. Be free. Come on, we just love people here, that's all. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Bossmans. We thank you for your hand that's mightily upon them and that you're using them, Lord, not only in this nation, but God, in the nations of the earth and South Africa. We pray towards that event as they go, as they train pastors, that we would even be a part of that great harvest there as we give generously today, that you would bring forth a harvest for them as well as for us. And we partner with them today. And we say yes. Multiply the gift and to the giver as well as to the bossmans for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Ushers, go ahead. Sing the line. It's a song that's rising in our hearts. There is a sound that's bringing victory. Stand with us once you there give. There is a shout that's breaking through the dark. There is a roar. And it's coming from you and me There is a song that's, that's rising, rising in our hearts Come on, lift your voice with us There is a sound that's bringing victory There is a shout that's breaking through the dark There is a roar and it's coming from you and me There is a roar and it's coming from you Let the lion roar in Alaska, let the lion roar from the north, let the lion roar through our nation, let the lion roar in all the let the lion roar in Alaska, let the lion roar from the north, let the lion roar through our nation, let the lion roar in all Come on, sing with us. There is a dance. That's releasing heaven's fire. Father, we thank you. Rhythm that's setting the captives free. There is a passion that's stirring up desire. There is a roar, and it's coming for you and me. There is a roar. And Come on, everybody. Sing with us, declare, prophesy. Yeah. Prophesy today. Let the lion roar. Alaska, let the lion roar from the north. Let the lion roar in our nation. Let the lion roar in all the earth. Let the lion roar in Alaska. Let the lion roar from the north. Let the lion roar to our 
Just your voices, sing it again. Let the lion roar in Alaska. Let the lion roar from the north. Let the lion roar through our nation. Let the lion roar in Alaska. One more time. Let the lion roar in Alaska. Let the lion roar from the north. Let the lion roar through our nation. Let the lion roar in all the earth. We're going to close this service, but before we do, we never want to close this service without giving an opportunity to get your heart right with God. If that's you, would you bow your head all across this place? Everybody bow their heads. Intercessors praying. You're not right with God. If you were to die, God forbid, today. If today was your last day, do you know for sure that heaven would become your home? Are your sins forgiven? Have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you asked for forgiveness and repented of your sin? You've got to receive him. You must be born again. If you've never received him, and you want to give your heart to him for the first time, or perhaps you did, but you know you drifted. You know you're in compromise. You've fallen away from your first love, and you want to come home today. If that's you, you fit in any of those categories, giving your heart to Jesus for the first time, or you want to come home and recommit your life to the Lord. All across this place, if that's you, nobody looking around, just between you and God. You say you want to be included in this prayer, if that's you. Lift your hand right now. Do it right now. Lift your hand if that's you. God bless you. Anybody else? Lift your hand high. God bless you. I see that hand. I see that hand, sir. Lift your hand if you want to get right with God. God bless you, ma'am. I see that hand. All the way in the back there, I see that hand. Up front here. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Pray right out loud. Come on, everybody across this place. Right out loud. Affirm your faith. And for those of you that are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time, right out loud. Those of you that are recommitting, right out loud, say with me, say, Dear Heavenly Father. Come on, say, Dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place. Forgive me of all of my sin. And thank you for rising again from the grave so that I could live in newness of life. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Save me. Heal me. Break every chain. And break every bondage. Wash me. Cleanse me. And make me new. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. Sign of surrender. Just lift your hands to Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill, touch each and every one. Baptize these afresh with your spirit. Heal the brokenhearted. And use us, God. Come on, say this. We say, use me. Use me for the purpose for which I was created, for the purpose for which I was created. Amen. Amen. Take someone's hand, won't you? Don't miss tonight, 6 o'clock. Reach across the aisles. Sunday, uh, Sunday nights tonight, 6 o'clock. Monday night, 7. Tuesday night, 7. Wednesday night. Don't miss it. Invite a friend. Let's pack this place out. Let's seek the Lord see what he's going to do. It's going to be great. Father, thank you. Bless your people. Cause your face to shine upon them. Lift up your countenance towards them. Be gracious to them. Keep them. Give them peace. In Jesus' name. We'll see you tonight, 6 o'clock. Bless you.